Hello everybody. I hope you're well today. I wanted to begin uh, my talk today sharing a quote with you from one of the Beatles. Um, his name was George Harrison. He was one of the members of the band. He said this. He said, gossip is the devil's radio. I like how he phrased that uh, because he talks about gossip being uh, something by which we broadcast something. And today, that's the topic of what I want to talk about. I want to talk about gossip. I want to begin in Proverbs with something Solomon wrote. If you have a Bible and you'd like to follow along, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, I'll be uh, speaking from the English Standard Version. You may have a different translation. That's totally okay. I think you'll be able to follow along with me on that. But we're going to begin in uh, Proverbs chapter 26 at verse 22. This is what Solomon wrote about gossip. He says, the words of a whisperer are like delicious morsels. They go down into the inner parts of the body. Isn't that interesting? That phrase that he uses, I think it's a great phrase. He describes gossip as delicious morsels. He says gossip kind of settles in on our palate and then in some way it makes its way into our deepest recesses. And when I read about that and what Solomon said, I thought, you know, gossip, it's unctuous. It's kind of like eating a greasy cheeseburger. I mean, who doesn't like a greasy cheeseburger, right? Where you pick it up, you take a bite of it, the juices run down your hand, maybe even down your arms. Kind of describes what Solomon is talking about here. Or it's, it's luscious. It's kind of like that Italian dessert tiramisu, you know, with its creamy custard of mascarpone and, and cocoa, lady fingers soaked in coffee that just melts in your mouth. This is kind of what Solomon is describing when he says that gossip is like delicious morsels. It's luxurious. It's kind of like fresh lobster dunked and dripping in clarified butter. Well, I hope those images kind of capture for you and, and for me what Solomon is saying here about gossip, that it's delicious morsels. So today I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about a man who is spreading gossip in the New Testament and what you and I can learn from this man. It's found in Mark's Gospel, chapter 7. If you'd turn there and uh, be able to follow along with me, we're going to start uh, verses 31 and 32. This is talking about Jesus. This is what Mark records. It says, Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay hands on him. Well, here we were with Jesus. He goes through this city of Tyre. He goes through this city of Sidon. They were northern coastal cities in Israel. They were largely Gentile cities. It's an area today known as modern-day Lebanon. This was a place where Jesus had healed many people. He had healed a demon-possessed daughter of a Syrophoenician woman. This non-Jewish woman came to Jesus one day and, and said, Jesus, can you heal my daughter? She's demon-possessed. And, and Jesus says something back to her. He says, he says, it isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now, Jesus wasn't trying to be mean to the woman. He was just trying to make a point to her that his ministry was primarily and firstly to the Jewish people. But even then, out of his compassion and his love for people, he healed this woman's daughter. This was the area that it happened in, this area known as the Decapolis. So Jesus travels into this area, the Decapolis. It's 10 Greco-Roman cities south and west of the Sea of Galilee. It includes some cities with names that you're probably familiar with. 
Philadelphia was one of the cities. And another city, Gadara. And it was in Gadara um, where Jesus healed a man who had a lot of demons in him. In fact, the demons were so great inside this man, they identified themselves as legion. Well, Jesus cast this legion of demons out of this man. They go into a herd of pigs, and then the pigs run down a steep embankment into the Sea of Galilee, and they drown. Um, Jesus had great compassion on non-Jewish people in this area known as the Decapolis. He healed a lot of people there, and he comes upon this man, this man who is deaf and has a speech impediment. Uh, you know, at that time, during Jesus' day, a deaf man with a speech impediment might have been the subject of people's gossip. And um, you know what? Even today might be the subject of people's gossip. But back in Jesus' day, they looked at people like that and who were afflicted with things like deafness, and they thought that it was a curse from God because of something that somebody had done. Now that, that would make for tasty conversation, wouldn't it? You know, somebody might look at this man, he's deaf, he has a speech impediment, and they think to themselves and share with others, I wonder what he did to deserve being deaf. Or somebody might think or say, well, I bet he blasphemed God, that's why he has a speech impediment. Or, or maybe somebody might say, you know, it might have been his parents. Maybe, maybe they did some evil and, and God's cursing him because they did some evil. You never know what somebody's going to do, do you? And so stories and gossip would spread like that. Now, I noticed something here in these few verses. It tells us that the people who were bringing this man to Jesus were desperate. They were desperate for a healing for him. So they begged Jesus to lay his hands on him and to heal him. Well, the story continues in Mark chapter 7, verses three, or 33 and 34. This is what it says. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers in his ears. And after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and he said to him, Ephatha, and that is, be opened. Now, that was a bit unconventional, wasn't it? Jesus puts his fingers in this guy's ears. Now, we, we might be afraid to do that with somebody, thinking, boy, once I take my fingers out, they might come out covered in earwax. I don't think Jesus thought anything about that. It tells us then that Jesus spits, and he touches the guy's tongue. Now, I don't know if he spit on his fingers and touches the man's tongue. That might seem a little bit gross, but maybe that's what he did. I don't know. It tells us that then Jesus looks to heaven, and, and here, I think this is where he prays. He prays to God, and he says, Ephatha, be opened. I believe Jesus was talking to his father here, asking his father to heal this man. And I noticed something else here, too, in these few verses. It tells us that Jesus sighs. Well, why would Jesus sigh? Did he still feel sorry for this man? Did he, did he have some compassion toward this man? I don't know. I was wondering, though, maybe it was a sigh of gladness. Maybe it was a sigh directed at Jesus' as father. Maybe Jesus was doing something like this. Papa, I know you can do this. And I'm just asking you as your son to heal this man. Now, there's a part of me that wants to think that that's the way that it happened because, you know what, sometimes I find myself praying that way. Sometimes I just find myself praying to God with a sigh that, God, this is something you can do. And I wonder if that's what Jesus was doing. I don't know. I like to think that way, though. Our story continues in Mark chapter 7, verse 35. It tells us this. And his ears were open and his tongue was released and he spoke plainly. 
Can you imagine being one of the people standing there watching this? Something impossible had just happened. Nobody's ever seen anything like this before. And I bet it didn't take long for people to start talking about it. In fact, in a similar story, when Jesus cast that legion of demons out of that man and they went down and to those pigs and the pigs ran into the sea in this same area where this is happening, the Decapolis, listen to what Matthew records in his gospel of what the people do. Matthew chapter 8, verse 33 Matthew says this, And the herdsmen fled, and going into the city, they told everything, especially what had happened to the demon-possessed men. Man, the news spread fast, and everybody wanted to know and wanted to see what had happened because they all came out of the city to where Jesus had cast the demons out of these men to see what the story was. You know what? Gossip spreads like wildfire. In fact, in James chapter 3, James says our words can begin as a small ember, but then they start a forest fire. And here, here is where the gossip in this story begins. It's in the next few verses. Mark chapter 7, verses 36 through 37. It tells us this, and Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealous they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, he has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Now this, my friends, this, my friends, is the best gossip. Jesus tried to stop the people from talking about the healing he had just performed, the miracle he had just performed on this man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And the more he tried to stop it, the more zealous the people became in spreading the gossip about it. They were so astonished at what Jesus had done, they couldn't help talking about it. They couldn't stop talking about how good Jesus was. I was wondering, are we like that? Are you like that? Am I like that? So astonished by what Jesus does in our life daily that we can't stop talking about it. So amazed by his goodness that we have to tell somebody about it so that they can tell somebody about it and they can tell somebody about it and they can tell somebody else about it. You know what? The Christian should be the biggest gossip on the planet in a good way. We should be spreading stories about God and about Jesus, about God's goodness, his love, his mercy, his grace, his compassion. I was wondering, do you have a story to tell anybody about what God's done for you in your life? Some kindness he has shown you, some provision, some protection, some blessing these people did. This man who was healed by Jesus did. He had a story to tell. And the, the more Jesus tried to stop them from telling the story, the more they told the story. You know, the psalmist captures what's going on here so well. In Psalm 66, verse 6, here's what the psalmist says. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done. For my soul. What has God done for your soul that's worth gossiping about? Well, I was wondering if you would share a prayer with me as we finish up. Father, you do miraculous things in our lives every day. 
You are so good to us, so kind to us. Lord, we should be gossiping about you every day, all day long. Help us to have grateful hearts, and out of the grateful heart flows this good, good gossip about you, Lord. Help us to do that. We pray in Jesus' name. Well, I hope you're a gossip about good things, the good things God has done for you and in your life. Until the next time, God bless all of you. I'll see you soon.